Quiz Prep, Chapter 7.1. Hello and welcome to Chapter 7, specifically Chapter 7.1 Quiz Prep. Now you'll see that I broke Chapter 7 into bite-sized pieces. Well, they're kind of big bites, um, but they are sequels to each other in that the whole Chapter 7 Quiz Prep story is about Matthew Gitlin. So who's Matthew Gitlin? Well, I don't know. I, I actually don't know him, and probably he'd be very surprised to learn he's the subject of this video. But he and his team, I mean, it wasn't him alone, they just wrote uh, an article. What they did was they follow a po population of chronic dialysis patients. That's painful, right? And they were studying their patterns of getting blood transfusions and payments to Medicare. So that was the point of their study. But one thing that caught my eye was that they used the Charleston Comorbidity Index, um, which was invented by Charleston in 1987 when I was 16. Uh, so this calculates a score for each person based on their comorbidities like diabetes, congestive heart failure, because what places want to always compare is how sick their patients are, but patients always have different problems. So they found a way of sort of reducing that to a number, Charleston did, and now you can get a number to say how sick you are, right? And so most people who are just kind of at work, you know, like healthy working people, they tend to be zero or one. But if you got, if you're a chronic dialysis patient, you probably got a lot going on. So Gitlin and his colleagues measured this population. And they found a population mean Charleston of 4.3. That's, you know, a lot higher than zero. And they found a population standard deviation of 2.5. So this sets the stage for chapter seven uh, quiz prep. Now we're gonna start, in 7.1, we're gonna focus on this thing called the empirical rule. So I'm going to explain that next. Okay, I just want to give you a quick orientation to what's going on with the empirical rule, okay? So first of all, you only do the empirical rule if you have a normally distributed data. That's this, you know, bell-shaped curve, right? Doo -doo -doo. So you'll notice, well, I don't have skewed data or anything like that. So that was the first thing. And um, Charleston comorbidity index is normally distributed, so we're able to do that. Next, when you have normally distributed data um, that's continuous, you know, it's quantitative, you're going to have a population uh, mean and a population standard deviation if you measure a population, which these guys did. So you're going to have that. And what you know, so see down here, this says M, that mu. Um, that, what that means is wherever this point line is going to be, you can just put automatically the mean there you know that that's going to be there, right? And it's going to be different depending on what your data are. Then uh, what they're trying to say is that you also need the population standard deviation, which we have here. And if you have that, you can take this, for instance, this mu here and add one of those standard deviations and you'll get a number up there. So let's do that. That's 4.3 plus 2.3. Five is what eight six point eight so this e here would be six point eight right and so what is this exactly saying so I'm gonna I'm gonna shade this in here because that's um, referring to this okay this is literally what it's saying let's just pretend for the sake of argument that the population only had a hundred people in it, okay? What it would say is that 34 people, 34% 34 of those people would have a Charleston between 4.3, which is the mean, and um, 6.8, which is one standard deviation above the mean. That's what they mean by 34% of the data is there. It means 34% of the people in the data are going to have a score like that, okay? And then you'll notice down here it's a little confusing. It says 68, but there that's referring to back and forth. So if we did over here, we wanted to do C, that's 4.3 minus 2.5. So 13 minus 5 is 8. 3 minus 2 is 1. Now we're down here into sort of like a... 1.8, right? 
so then again 34 of our 100 theoretically would be on the low side 1.8 to 4.3 and then if you looked at the whole thing you'd say well if you go from 1.8 all the way up to 6.8 you're going to get 68 percent of the data or 68 people which if you think of 100 that's almost all of them but that's because we're in the middle humpy part where there's a high frequency right remember our frequency distribution you know there's a lot of people in there um, there's not so many people down in the weird parts, you know, the tails. And so that's how you calculate this A, B, C, D, E, F. Uh, you know, D is kind of the giveaway. That's the mu here, the mean. Then you just add one standard deviation to get E, and you subtract one to get C. We did that together. Now, how do you do F? You know, this one up here, well, there are two ways, but they get you the same thing is if you already have e you, which is 6.8 you can just add one more standard deviation which is 2.5 um that wasn't very clear five and draggy draggy um you can just do that and then eight and five thirteen carry the one six seven eight nine and then you get nine point three here you know you can do that or some people like to times this by two so you'd say 2.5 times 2 equals, I think it's 5, right? 5.0. So if you do that, if you if you just add 5 to this uh, mean, you know, I'm running out of room here, 5 plus, what was the mean? 4.3? Then you'll get the same answer, 9.3. I mean, it's just two different ways of doing it. So all I'm saying is, or all they're saying is, is to get this one, you add two standard deviations, and of course to get this one, you subtract two, and then you have the three Z, which is up here, and then uh, you'll be able to answer all of these questions. Okay, and here are the answers. So if you've been able to fill this in, these should be the correct answers, and now we're gonna use those answers in the subsequent questions. Okay, so now that we filled in that, we can fill in the rest of the answers, right? So I put question two here. Um, what percent of the data is between 4.3 and 9.3? Well, let's see here. Here's 4.3 and here's 9.3. So we know between 4.3 and 6.8, that's over here. And we know between 6.8 and 4.3 is that. So theoretically, you just do 34% plus 13.5%. And what does that equal? That equals 47.5%, right? And so that's what you would get there. All right, and here comes question three. So you should be getting the hang of this. So what percent of the data is between 1.8, where's that? That's right up here. And 6.8. Oh, I kind of did that example where you have these two. Uh, so 34% plus 34%. Pretty obvious, 68%. See how easy this is? Okay, here we are in question four. And just now that you're getting the hang of this, I'm going to throw a little monkey wrench into the plans. So this one's a little harder than the last two. Okay, so I want to point out two things. First of all, the last two questions, we were talking about percent, right? We said calculate the percent. This one, question four, we're saying estimate the probability. So what's the difference? The answer is nothing. It's just a different way of saying the percent, okay? So don't let that throw you off. Secondly, before we were doing things like from one um, value to another, right? Like between 1.8 and 6.8, you know, what's the probability or what's the percent? This time in question four, we're saying greater than 6.8, okay? And where's 6.8? That's here. So that is technically at mu plus one standard deviation. So that's here, okay? Now here's the dangerous part. Don't make the mistake of just adding this and this together and saying that's the answer, right? Because you'll be getting this little piece and you'll be getting this little piece. But what about this little piece, right? If you add up 
34% plus 13.5% plus 2.35%, you should get, like, like in order to get this whole thing over here, that should be 50%, right? But you're not going to get that if you put that all together. You still need this little piece at the end, and what is that little piece? You, um, it's 0.15%. Not like 1.4%, like 0.15%. It's really, really small, but it's there. And so you're probably, your next question is, why is that not on this colorful diagram? And I have no idea, but people always do that. They leave it off the diagram and then everybody leaves it off the equation and there's all these issues. So what you should be doing is setting up your equation as 13.5% plus 2.35, that's a point in there, percent plus, remember, oh, 0.15%. And that's going to take care of the whole thing up here. And if you do that, uh, well, we can do it together. It's a little hard to do it this way. Let me change colors here. So we're going to just stack them up. 13.5 because they're weird like this, like 2.35 and then 0 0.15. Now we can be organized about adding all these together. So 5 and 5 is 10. Carry the 1. 8, 9, 10. Oh, that's nice. We get a whole number. Carry the 1. And then five here is a six, and then one. Okay, so what is that per percent? So that's how we get the answer, 16%. So I, I, I worked that out for you, the important message, don't forget this little piece. Okay, so finally we get to the last question, which is question five, which is kind of a freebie, right? So what is the probability that a person will have a Charlson between you know, it's saying probability, but it means, you know, like percent. Um, between 1.8, where is that? And 4.3, and you know what that is. That's just this little piece here. 34%, you're a pro. Okay, congratulations. You made it to the end of Chapter 7.1 Quiz Prep, which we have a sequel coming. That's Chapter 7.2-7.3. In that, we revisit our uh, chronic dialysis patients, and again, uh, we uh, again talk about them in 7.4 and 7.5. So I hope you uh, get used to them um, and get used to this mu and this population standard deviation. It'll be coming back to you. All right, so in 7.1, we started with the empirical rule. We had this little diagram. We filled out the diagram. We calculated the correct answers for our population. And then we started looking at how to calculate what percent of the data is between these different cut points. So just as a little foreshadowing, you know, these cut points are sort of limiting. What if we wanted to pick other cut points? That's what's going to be covered next. But now that you understand how to calculate the percent and the probability, uh, it's going to be a little easier to understand the more complex ideas. Okay. Well, congratulations on making it through Quiz Prep 7.1, and quick, go ahead, take the quiz before you forget stuff. Good luck.